Hello everyone. Uh, it's 11 o'clock Sunday and it's a sunny Sunday morning in Mumbai. Uh, I, Suravi, bring to you yet another Steamboat session. And I'm very, very happy to share with you that today we have, I mean, uh, we have almost completed, we have completed one year. And today we are starting episode one of season two. And uh, now Sunday being obviously Sunday, uh, we tend to, well, we, some of us at least tend to, you know, wake up late, either cause we sleep late on previous Saturday night, or we just don't feel like doing anything or getting up early morning in the Sunday. So today we have among us uh, Megha, who is associated with uh, the uh, Design and Technology Lab of HBCSE, that is Humi Baba Center for Science Education. And uh, Megha works on uh, creating new resources for students and teachers in design and science. Uh, so uh, Megha, uh, are you there? Uh, yes, sir, I am here. So uh, we welcome you to the Steamboat session. And uh, so uh, Megha, today, I guess we are talking something on about sleep, right? So are you, like, will you tell us like how to sleep or like, or you are going to make a sleep in the session? Like, what is it exactly about? Uh, no, actually, I'm not going to teach how to sleep or I'm also not planning to make you sleep. But uh, in the session, we are just going to see uh, what is sleep because uh, and what uh happens inside our body and brain when we are sleeping. Okay. Sleep is such a common phenomenon. We all of us sleep every day, but we don't think about what is happening when we are sleeping inside our body and brain. Is it really important to our life? Uh, nowadays, people ignore their sleep a lot. They sleep uh, like at uh, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. and they get up late in the morning. So does this really have any effect on our body? We don't know. And uh, this is what I want to explore in today's session and discuss in the uh, discuss with students. Okay. So uh, without wasting much time, uh, let's just start. Uh, firstly, I would just like to know uh, how much, uh, how many hours do you spend sleeping on an average uh, on a daily so, basis? Yeah. So, so the audience, you can put in your, uh, you know, your uh, thoughts, your views on the chat box, like how many hours on an average do you sleep? Like, yeah, I sleep, I guess, um, four and a half hours or five hours. Okay. So, Survi sleeps for five hours. Uh, Survi, uh, uh, I can't see the chat box. So, uh, will you uh, help yeah, sure, me sure. if there are any answers in the chat So, we box? have one answer again. One. Yeah. Uh, so, Anab is saying six and a half. Six and a half. There's one more answer, seven. Okay. Seven to eight. So Aditi is saying seven to eight. Seven to eight. Okay. So, okay. Uh, uh, if we assume that on an average, we sleep for seven to eight hours. Uh, and for your, uh, uh, for our calculation purpose, let's just assume that we sleep for eight hours uh, on daily basis. Then can you uh, just, uh, make a quick guess like how much time we spend sleeping in one year like how many days or how many hours or how many months we spend sleeping so Arnav is saying ki, uh, so you are asking about this uh, average sleep on like about the night sleep or about also the one where in the lectures we sleep? sleep no 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 I'm not talking <laughs> about lecture sleep but I'm talking about night sleep yeah okay. So like if on an average, whatever the fact is, it's eight hours, right? Yeah. So, so can you? Uh, huh. So uh, eight hours. So it's like uh, 24 hours. Me if I'm sleeping eight hours, but it's like, it's like almost one third of 24 hours. Yes. Yeah, you are right. So if you consider that uh, you are spending one third of your day sleeping, mm -hmm. then how much time do you think you might uh, spend in one year so one year has 12 months and one third of 12 months that is 12 divided by three is four months so we almost spend four months of your sleeping and if we consider that we uh, are going to live for 75 years then we are roughly spending like 25 years of our life sleeping so 25 is actually a significant number so okay. 
let's explore in this in the session are we really investing this time in sleeping or we are wasting this time and now i have a question for you all um when we are discussing about sleep what do you think which organ you believe is most closely related to sleep uh, you can type your answers in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and let me know so um on uh, this uh, zoom may we are having uh, answers such as brain okay somebody saying eyes i guess youtube pe bhi we have some uh, comments okay. i have to check it uh, i uh, let me check it so there is heart okay so uh, here we are getting different answers and mm -hmm. someone also said brain but uh, and mostly it has been seen that uh, somehow most of us end up connecting sleep to the brain because we think that brain is the commanding organ of our body it controls everything so most of the people associate brain uh, the organ brain with the sleep but you will be really fascinated to know that sleep has evolved even before brains and according to the recent studies people have found out that there are animals like uh, there are creatures like hydra uh, which are very small like around uh, from few millimeters to 1 uh, cm length in length mm -hmm. and uh, they do not have brain but they manage to sleep so this is so exciting there are creatures who do not have brain but they still manage to sleep so what is sleep how it is defined and uh, researchers and scientists have been uh, wondering upon this question for a very long period of time and now we have a uh, general uh, mega i would just like to tell you that yeah. when you switch from one slide to another just give us uh, a, bit, a bit of like 20 second 30 second pause so that uh, you know people who are in youtube they can also catch up with us okay sure i will give a uh, yeah. uh, 20 second uh, yeah pause so what it sleep and now we have a rough definition for it and sleep is defined as a state where our uh, responsiveness to external stimuli decreases and uh, uh, creatures or uh, organisms which have found uh, that uh, they manage to sleep they are in relatively inactive stage so what is relatively inactive stage is like suppose there is a creature which moves 10 times in 1 minute here and there when it's awake then it moves just once or twice when it's sleeping so relative inactivity here we are comparing to that organism only so organisms which uh, show reduced responsiveness to external stimuli and um, and are in relative inactive stages are assumed to sleep so uh, this is how sleep is defined and it has been a really fascinating topic for a human kind and um, people have been trying to uh, explore what is sleep they have been trying to check what happens when we sleep and uh, it has a very interesting history as well so earlier there were many theories about sleep uh, like till 19 a century and one of the theory was people used to think that sleep is caused by the lack of blood circulation so whenever there is uh, uh, whenever there is no enough blood supply to the brain brain falls asleep this is what people used to think earlier the second theory was people observed that uh, when we, whenever we are sleeping our body temperature reduces by 1 to 2 degrees celsius and they thought that this change in temperature might be the cause of sleep this change in temperature might be inducing sleep and the third theory which was uh, there was uh, people uh, related sleep to the digestive processes so they observed that whenever we have heavy meals uh, we usually uh, feel sleepy and this is why they thought that Uh, all the energy is focused on digestive processes when we have meals and that's why we feel sleepy that is because of lack of energy after having meals brain falls asleep 
these were the theories which uh, were there earlier and this is how people thought about sleep but now i want to know what do you think why do we sleep why is sleep important uh you can uh, unmute and uh, also answer or you can type in the chat box like why, uh, why do you feel that we need to sleep i sleep to get rest okay so let's see what other people uh, like uh, give so let us wait for few more minutes okay yeah, so sure. aditya is saying to rest our body and to rest for i mean to give rest to the body and to the brain okay so most of the answers are about this only so even on the youtube we have about like body and brain both okay ma'am we can tired so we can sleep okay we get tired and that's why we sleep okay so uh, indirectly we are trying to give rest to our body uh, because we are tired right yes ma'am okay anushka okay so most of the answers are like to give rest to our body and brain so what do you think uh, does activity of our body and brain reduces significantly when we are sleeping so uh, you might be seeing two questions on your screen right now the first one is the does activity of body decrease significantly when we sleep and the second one is does activity of brain decrease significantly when we sleep so you can type your answers in the chat box or unmute yourself and let me know so if you are typing in chat box then you can type like one yes to no or one yes to yes or one no to no so should we what do you think um i feel both are yes yes okay and aditi uh, saying is yes. one no to yes aditi is saying that okay and anam is saying one maybe but two no prajna okay. is saying one yes two no so yeah uh, okay so most of the answers are like activity of the body decreases that is yes and for the second question that is people are some people are saying that activity of brain decrease and some people are saying that activity of brain doesn't decrease so let's see what's the answer so the fact is both brain and body rest uh, stay remarkably active when we are sleeping both brain and uh, brain and body are doing their jobs when they are sleeping so and but they are doing definitely different jobs like uh, when you are uh, active your brain might be uh, involved in writing learning new topics playing talking to people but when you are sleeping it's in involved in different activities and we are going to get to know what they are but uh, right now let's focus on the body part so if we are sleeping and body is staying remarkably active then what do you think which body organ might be staying remarkably active which body organs keep working even when you are sleeping so aditi singh heart oh yeah that's right your heart can never stop yes heart is one of the answer i feel even your stomach and your digestive system keeps on working when you are sleeping yeah you are absolutely right suri so when we are sleeping uh, yeah your digestive uh, process uh, your digestive system does work on uh, satish is saying lungs yes lungs also can't stop at all because your body needs oxygen all the time yeah there is another interesting one by sayali subconscious mind oh subconscious mind yeah that's an interesting answer yes a brain to definitely stays active here we saw but what are the other body parts you think might be uh, active okay ma'am eyes oh wow anushka has given a really great answer yes your eyes are also active when you are sleeping 
so uh, people have found out that even when you are sleeping under your closed eyelids your eyes are still moving and on the basis of these eye movements the two major phases of sleep have been named as rapid eye movement sleep and non rapid eye movement sleep rapid eye movement sleep is a phase when your eyes are moving rapidly when you are sleeping and non rapid eye movement sleep is a sleep stage when your eyes are moving uh, slowly uh, slowly uh, and uh, they are not moving rapidly With, so there are two phases one is rapid eye movement that is rem and non rapid eye movement non rem and uh, this discovery happened around 70 years ago that there are two stages of sleep and even after 70 years of research today we don't have exact answers for why there are these two stages that uh, that is rapid eye and non rapid eye movement and uh, how the transition happens uh, and when the transition exactly happens so all these answers are still like a mystery to us and lot of research has been happening in this field so let's try to just roughly explore what is what do we mean by uh, rem sleep and what do we mean by nrem sleep so first one that we are going to see is rapid eye movement sleep so in this phase brain activity is similar to when you are awake like if, uh, when you are awake your brain is doing lot of work and it has been observed that if, in rem stage when your eyes are moving the brain is doing same amount of work it is equally active and uh, the second observation has been in the stage your heart rate your respiratory rate your blood pressure increases and uh, and one of the most interesting fact is in rem sleep uh, is a period when most of your dreaming occurs like all the horrible happy funny dreams that you sleep like most of the dreams usually uh, tend to occur in rem sleep and also it has been observed that blood flow in the brain increases so uh, people have been wondering why blood flow in the brain increases and recently uh, researchers have found the answer for it so why the blood flow increases the reason is when you are sleeping your blood vessels uh, in rem stage dilates and uh, when blood flow is really fast it helps in removing toxins from your brain here what do i mean by toxins like toxins are the by products or the waste products that are generated in brain when cells are working so this blood flow is actually helping the increase in blood flow is actually helping in removing toxins from the brain so so far we know these many things about rem sleep and the uh, and about nrem uh, it has been observed that in this stage our oral brain activity is reduced uh, at times rem stage is also known as uh, deep sleep stage as well we sleep calmly our eyes are not moving and uh, it has been also observed that in this stage our blood flow is reduced heart beat is reduced and one of the thing which we earlier saw that people observed that body temperature decreases that decrease in body temperature happens in this in rem phase so uh, these have been the observations so meka uh, let me stop you for a yeah. moment so there is a question in the audience ki yes. uh, do we see dreams only in rem uh okay the answer to this question is actually no most of the dreaming happens in rem but people do see dreams in in rem phase as well but the sleep uh, but the observations has been that in in rem phase whatever dreams we see they are big vivid as compared to rem sleep okay but yeah if a person is really healthy and having a good sleep then usually uh, in in rem phase they uh, don't tend to uh, then uh, dreaming doesn't occur much in in rem but yes dreaming happens in both the stages or both the phases so so okay. are there any other questions and uh, no i'm not right now okay so now we saw that uh, there are two stages in sleep that is in rem and rem 
but uh, is sleep playing any uh, so in the sleep these rem uh, nrem uh, phases how they are occurring are they occurring randomly or they are occurring in pattern or uh, one day we spend entire time in rem and uh, second night we are spending entire time in in rem so these have been the questions people have been thinking about and uh, you might be seeing a graph on your screen so after looking at this graph what do you think how these stages are occurring are they occurring in pattern or they are occurring randomly what do you feel i can see here a pattern the you know the graph or the picture which you are showing here there is a yes pattern. definitely there is a pattern even aditya is saying that there are different patterns aditya is yes so you might be seeing that there is a cycle of n rem and rem phase and it's uh, repeating after a certain amount of time and after how much time it repeats the answer is on screen like after every 90 to 100 minutes these uh, this cycle is being repeated and there is one more interesting thing in this uh, graph uh, let's see who notices it first uh, aditya has written Uh, yeah there is a pattern of high to low there is pattern of high to low uh, so aditya if you are available can you just unmute yourself and explain to me what do you mean by exactly high to low okay i think there might be some technical problem with his mic so should we uh, do you observe anything else apart from there yeah, is yeah i see the n rem part decreasing over the hours and the rem part increasing yeah yes definitely this was one of the interesting thing which has been found, uh, found out in last uh, two three decades that the rem Uh, phase the length of rem actually decreases as we tend to complete our sleep suppose if we are sleeping for 8 hours so as we are completing 8 hours of our sleep the time the amount of time we are spending in this phase is actually increasing that is our uh, dreaming phase is increasing in short so this uh, has been the observation about the pattern about rem and in rem and now we have discussed these two phases uh, let's see is role uh, is sleep play, playing any major role in our life so uh, actually the answer is yes sleep has been playing a major role in our life and people are uh, interested in knowing how they sleep how much they sleep are they having a good sleep or not and uh, today we have modern watches which actually track your sleep using your body movements and heart rate and they give you a rough data so on the screen right now you might be seeing uh, there are two graphs the first graph actually uh, shows uh, how much time are you spending in rem sleep when you are awake and how much time you are uh, spending in deep sleep and the second graph shows about uh, for how many hours do you sleep uh, in a stretch of 2 3 weeks Uh, but here the interesting graph is the first one like how much time are we uh, spending in rem and in rem and here we can see that this pattern is very close to what we just saw in the earlier slide am i right so can everyone see that the uh, length of rem is increasing as the person is uh, completing its 8 hours the the purple boxes right yes the purple boxes yes. are rem phases and the blue boxes are non uh, are the non rem phases what is that uh, red uh, you know red line the oh that red line. red line means that the person uh, uh, suddenly got up uh, yeah that means okay, that maybe maybe due to some noise, noise or something like that right yes yes okay so, so this, uh, this is yeah. what modern uh, watches are doing and it's really remarkable that we are able to get our sleep data on our watches so science has really uh, proceeded fast in last 100 years 
so now um uh, i have a question uh whenever you have exams have ever uh, have have you ever heard your parents or grandparents telling you that sleep well so that you can remember uh, things in uh, your exam like whatever you learned or whatever you have understood yes it happened to me every day yeah even when i used to study for my exam my parents used to tell me oh don't be stressed you just sleep well you will remember everything so is there anyone else who uh, have, have this experience? experience yeah okay so the people say that uh, you will remember things well if you sleep so is there any solid relation between sleep and memory are they really uh, closely related so the answer is actually yes your sleep and mem- uh, your memories uh, and sleep are actually very closely related and sleep is playing a very major role and uh, as we saw there are two phases that is rapid eye movement and rapid rapid eye movement sleep these both phases are playing a crucial role in memory so there is nrem phase which actually helps in strengthening our memories which are mostly uh, about remembering facts here i mean facts like 5 plus 2 is 7 uh, there are three side the uh, triangle has three sides or uh, all the sides of squares are equal these are the facts which we usually try to remember and these memories are actually strengthened in non rem phase that is uh, when uh, your eyes are not moving rapidly and in rem phase the phase in which most of the dreaming occurs in this phase the memories which are uh, associated with our understanding of world are strengthened so what do i mean by this is uh, as i mentioned earlier in rem phase most of the dreaming happens and in dream we usually are in a particular situation or an environment where there might be a lot of people around us lot of uh objects around us and we are dealing with these people and object so le- uh, let me give an example suppose there is a student who uh, is a freshy and it's his first day of college and uh, he goes and he observes that okay there are different paths uh, there are short cuts there are long cuts which lead you to the same uh, which lead uh, which lead him or her to the same location so in the dream he might be in the similar situation and he might be getting late to the college and that's why he's taking a shortcut and running through the college so this is what i mean by using facts so his memory is about understanding of the world that there are shortcuts and i need to use the shortcuts whenever i'm getting late these memories are getting strengthened when uh, we are in rem phase that is when our eyes are moving rapidly and it has been found that uh, the eye movement actually has to do something with the visual processes which are going uh, in our dreaming phase so these are the interesting facts about sleep and memory so let's see what will happen if we do not sleep and uh, this question that what will happen if we do not sleep uh, has been bothering researchers since last decade and uh, there are a lot of new things which have been discovered and one of the recent discovery uh, i found it to be really interesting so that uh, so i thought i should share it with all of you and uh, that discovery has to do with drosophila so uh, at times people study sleep uh using different insects flies or uh different organisms as well and drosophila is actually insect or uh, they are called as a fruit flies uh you might at times see these flies around over ripe fruits uh, or rotting fruits these are the very small small uh, blackish brown insects which might be lingering around over ripe fruits and these are found commonly uh but the interesting fact about these fruit flies is that they have a little tiny brain they also have a digestive tract like us so it's uh, it's a very good uh, model or- organism to test few things so people studied drosophila for sleep and what they did is they did not allow drosophila to sleep at all and they checked what's happening 
development, they observe premature death in these drosophilas. So, uh, uh, so how early does drosophila die? The answer is usual lifespan of drosophila is around two to three months. Like if drosophila is really healthy, it can live for around 60 to 90 days. But when drosophilas were not allowed to sleep at all, they started dying after 10th day. So this was a, uh, a really premature death that scientists observed. And uh, they were trying to figure out like why this, uh, these drosophila died. And uh, they found the ans uh, uh, answer in one of the part of drosophila. Uh, now I want you to guess like, which part of drosophila they might have found answers. Like eyes of drosophila, brain of drosophila, digestive tract or wings or legs of drosophila. What do you people think? Can you make a guess? Like why they died? Like yes, they found a, a reason for death of drosophila in one of the part of okay. uh, its okay. body part. So, so, so what do you think? Which part eyes. Okay, eyes. Okay. I guess the brain. brain of brain of drosophila. Oh, Anush, uh, Anushka is saying brain of drosophila. Okay. Are there any other answers? Mm, not yet, but like we can take like few seconds more. Like let's see. Yes. If we have something on the YouTube. Uh... So another person is saying brain. Okay. Since you mentioned wings also, is it wings? Oh, uh, no, it's not wings. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but that's an interesting answer. But uh, surprisingly, scientists found the answer for uh, this question uh, in uh, digestive tract of the drosophila. They found oh. that there is something happening in the digestive tract of drosophila, which is causing premature death. So let's see how they came up with uh, this answer, what did they really observe? So they observed that in the digestive tract of, uh, tract of the drosophila, there are reactive oxygen species which were increasing. So what are reactive oxygen species? These are actually chemical molecules uh, which contain oxygen, but they are really highly reactive. Like they uh, react with your tissues and they usually tend to damage your tissues. So these were the species uh, whose number was increasing in the digestive tract of the drosophila when drosophilas were not allowed to sleep at all. And uh, scientists were figure, uh, trying to figure out like, is this the only reason why drosophila died? So they did one really interesting experiment. So the, what they observed in, uh, in the first uh, uh, thing, uh, in the first image was, when drosophilas were not allowed to sleep, they started dying early. That is after the 10th day. And within 20 days, almost all the drosophila died. So what they did was to confirm that it's the only reason. Uh, they did not allow some of the drosophila to sleep, but they kept giving antioxidants to them. So what are antioxidants? These are actually substances which uh, neutralize ROS. That is reactive oxygen species, which... Uh, tend to damage the tissues or cells of the drosophila. So uh, how they neutralize the reactive oxygen species, they actually try to reduce the reactivity of the ROS. And uh, this is how uh, they try to nullify the effect of ROS in drosophila. And they observe that even, the, even though they are not allowing drosophilas to sleep, the drosophilas are uh, able to live their life when given oxidants. So it suggests that these ROAs, that is reactive oxygen species, which are, whose number was increasing in digestive tract, was the only reason or was the main reason because of which drosophilas were dying. So it was a great surprise for everyone that the answer for death of the drosophila uh, was in the digestive tract of the drosophila. And this is about the insect or this is about the fruit, this is about the fruit flies. Here we can see that if 
they are not uh, uh, allowed to sleep then what happens so similarly when in humans lack of sleep can have really uh, bad impact on our body and health so let's see what will happen if we do not sleep uh, it has been observed that uh, it has been observed in different studies that lack of sleep actually leads to gastrointestinal problems you might have heard uh, people saying are me aaj theek se nahi soya to mujhe acidity feel ho rahi hai mujhe acha nahi lag raha hai uh, it has been also observed that uh, if uh, people uh, do not sleep properly then uh, their immunity also uh, their immune response to uh, external uh, viruses bacteria is not good like Uh, they usually tend to get infected badly so uh, and also they observed that lack of sleep can actually let to uh, can actually uh, affect the formation of immune memory so what do i mean by immune memory here is whenever our body fights with these bacteria and viruses our body tries to remember like what it really did to kill those bacteria bacteria and viruses like how it uh, fought with those bac- bacteria and viruses so that next time when these bacteria and viruses attack on us we can even react fastly and uh, win the fight so uh, finally uh, it uh, the people have observed that immune response is actually affected uh, up to a great extent uh, because of sleep and uh, one more important thing uh, according to studies is that sleep actually plays a key role in even regulating emotions so even is, uh, today we might be sorry yeah th- there is also add on by aditya ki you get you know dark circles under your eyes yes yes yeah uh, it happens we also get dark circles and we also be- become cranky or frustrated when we are not sleeping properly like once i did not sleep properly and i had a very big fight with my family so that from that day i play, started paying a lot of attention towards sleep like it really plays a important role in regulating emotion as, emotions as well and uh, if we don't sleep properly it can actually lead to uh, different mental illnesses as well so today we are talking about sleep but we usually tend to ignore sleep like if people are facing problems in sleeping like they are not able to sleep properly uh, although they have slept properly at night like for 7 to 8 hours they are feeling sleepy during day time as well so uh, people tend to ignore all these things but these can be really serious things uh, for uh, some of us and uh, we really need to pay attention to this and for the same purpose now in india and in other countries hospitals and different centers have sleep labs which are actually involved in research and as well as diagnosis so there are uh, diseases which are related to sleep for example sleep apnea in which uh, people actually uh, people's breathing actually stops for few seconds and then it restarts but uh, this can be uh, at times dangerous for person's health and there is one more uh, disease called narcolepsy as well uh, where people feel sleepy although they had a good sleep like all the time du- during a day time while working or when they are in school they keep feeling sleepy and they fall asleep wherever they are and uh, these diseases are being diagnosed in the sleep labs and what these sleep labs do is they just monitor your brain activity they try to uh, monitor your heart rate blood pressure and your body movements as well and then they come up with uh, answers to your problems like are you having any serious problem or not uh, and they also prescribes medicines if needed and uh, now we are coming to the end of session so i would like to uh, wish all of you good sleep and uh, stay healthy and if you are interested uh, in exploring sleep bit more then you can actually uh, visit 
these links and explore more about it. Uh, I will paste these links in the chat box in a minute or two. Thank you. Thank you, Megha. So, uh, so let us move on to the question and answers part and the session part. And uh, so people, if you have uh, questions or if you have any comments, you can put it in the chat box. So we will give you a minute to just put in the questions in the chat box, whether on the YouTube or on the Zoom platform. So till the time uh, Megha uh, questions come up, uh, yeah. uh, one person has requested, can you like uh, explain it once more about how that Drosophila experiment was done? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, so in Drosophila experiment, what they exactly did was they did not allow Drosophila to sleep at all. Uh, for a very long period of time. And they observed that when they are not letting Drosophila sleep, they died early. That is, after 10th day, or 10th day, they started dying. And they had an interesting observation that when Drosophilas are dying, uh, when Drosophilas are dying and they are not allowed to sleep, then uh, the number of reactive oxygen species in their digestive tract is increasing. So what are these reactive oxygen species? These are the molecules which contain oxygen, but they are highly reactive. They actually uh, end up damaging your tissues. They end up damaging your digestive tract. Uh, sorry, they end up di uh, damaging Drosophila's digestive tract. So now they wanted to confirm that are these ROAs are the main reason behind Drosophila's death or not? So to explore this, what did they do was they uh, did not allow, allow Drosophila to uh, sleep, but they gave antioxidants to them. What are antioxidants? Antioxidants are substances which actually helps in removing or neutralizing these ROAs, like these chemicals which are harming the Drosophila. So after giving antioxidants, they saw that although Drosophila is not sleeping properly, but they are able to live their life. So what does it mean? Like when, uh, when antioxidants are given, that is when ROS is removed from the digestive tract, Drosophila is able to live its life. It means that ROS, that is reactive oxygen species, which were generated in the digestive tract, were actually killing the Drosophila. So the lack of sleep induced chemicals in the digestive tract which actually led to the death of drosophila so they in uh, so they confirmed that uh, lack of sleep had a very uh, great effect in the digestive tract which leads to the death okay thank you so uh, so we have a question one question is how were the drosophila not allowed to sleep how they were not allowed to sleep. Okay, so uh, there are many different methods, but here what they did what they did was drosophilas were kept in a medium and, or a tube, and the tube was moved constantly using a machine asymmetrically. There was no rhythmic moment. It was moving constantly so that drosophilas can't sleep. Like suppose if we are sleeping and if someone is disturbing us all the time, moving us all the time, then we can't sleep. Similarly, if drosophilas are kept in a tube and if that tube is like rotated all the time uh, in different directions, then it can't sleep. So mainly by disturbing their sleep, right? Yes, yes. The, okay. They disturb their sleep uh, using different mechanical processes. So Sayali is saying, uh, asking how many hours of sleep is needed for our body? So is it like eight hours always? Uh, the answer is for different people, actually, it can be different. Like for some people, even seven hours of sleep might be enough. For some, uh, nine hours of sleep might be enough. But it has been found that on an average, we usually need eight hours of sleep. Okay, so Aditya is asking how scientists catch Drosophila. How did they catch Drosophila? Okay, so even you can catch Drosophila at home. So if you uh, cut the tomato and keep it 
uh, in some open place or if you keep the overripe banana in a uh, open place you uh, you will see that there will be makhi nahi hai but there will be very small blackish brown insects which will come around these fruits and from here you can actually catch the rosella and uh, i would like to add on to it ki aditya like also you can put it in a container that half cut tomato in a container so wo container yeah. ke andar when these you know flies comes and enter you can then put the lid on it so that is how yes. you catch it and to know more on it so we in uh, homi baba center for science education mein there is a lab known as the cube lab and and they uh, we will put in those links later so in cube labs me they have many uh, great experiments for school kids like of your age jahan pe they show you and they teach you how to catch drosophila how to do experiments with drosophila so yeah so uh, one more interesting question we have is uh, you know which even i had this question huh. ki uh, do plants sleep uh the answer to this question is a bit complicated but uh, if we consider the definition of sleep that is reduced responsiveness to external stimuli and relative inactivity then uh, we can say that yes plants do sleep but uh, even in plants uh, all plants don't sleep in same way like in animals the way we sleep and the way a uh, dog or cat sleep is very different similarly in plants mango plant and banana plant might sleep differently they might have different responses for different stimuli so people have observed that uh, responsiveness of plants also uh, decreases uh, in certain period of time and uh, it and they consider that yes plants uh, and we can consider that yes plants also do sleep but yes the way they sleep might be very different and uh, there is very interesting experiment about which we all might have uh, heard in our childhood or in our school uh, that jagdish chandra bose actually showed that yes plants also do sleep and that experiment was actually uh, very interesting do you people all know about what was that experiment um so we do you know that uh, like what did he do to show that plant sleep i don't uh, remember but i remember there was a chapter about jagdish chandra bose in yeah. one of our hindi chapter in the book but i don't remember exactly okay so he did a really cool experiment so he did this experiment with mimosa plant so it has been observed that whenever we touch this mimosa plant in marathi we at times call it lajaruts azhad so uh, when we touch this plant uh, the leaves of this plant uh, of plants tend to close and they uh, they become droopy so he used this observation to test if plant sleep or not but uh, he used a different method he did not touch the plants because at times uh, we might not regulate the touch at times we might touch hardly at times touch might be soft and how plant might respond to that we don't know so what he did he saw that even when plants were uh, these plants were giving uh, light electric shocks they used to react similarly like leaves used to get close and the plant stems uh, used to become droopy so uh, he uh, gave these light shocks of same intensity uh, uh, frequently with some frequency for 24 hours and he observed that actually the responsiveness of this mimosa plant reduces so uh, on the screen you might be seeing a graph like uh, whenever the plant was given the electric shock you might see there uh, there is a line which going up dotted line and the lines which are coming downward uh, they show that it's closing its leaves so this was the experiment that he did and one more interesting thing about this experiment is that he saw that its responsiveness is actually decreasing during 12 pm to around uh, 6 pm like that is the day time for her as oh. in day time we are active oh, that's bizarre yeah and uh, th- this plant's responsiveness actually decreases during 12 pm to 6 pm but like this this was observed for the mimosa right like, uh, yes, not necessary for all plants no no this is not necessary 
uh, for all plants like we mentioned earlier like the way uh, plant sleep might be really different like mm-hmm. across, uh, across different species uh, their sleep might be of very different type okay so um so one last question maybe um, yes do all animals sleep with their eyes closed uh no actually uh, no not all animals uh, sleep with the closed eyes yeah like because... the rabbits eyes yeah yes so, so, uh, so i read somewhere ki you know rabbits uh, they uh, often sleep with their open eyes yeah and so you cannot like exactly find out like whether they are sleeping or whether they are awake yes and and, and like uh, another thing I, uh, yeah and i have also heard that there is one kind of fish as well which sleeps with uh, open eye oh. but right now i am not able to recall the name acha acha and and also like ostriches like you said like there is rem and there is non rem hmm. right so scientists hmm. have i don't know like how far it is true this is again hmm. i read somewhere ki hmm. uh, like the non rem uh uh what do you call it like ostriches also have a slow eye movement and during that time they keep their eyes open and okay. uh, they stand and they keep their eyes open in the sleep so that's the way they sleep and when they are they are having their rapid eye movement wala uh, segment then at that time they have this closed eye sleep oh wow so that that's interesting a, interesting yeah. yeah so i will definitely go back and explore about this so uh, there's a uh, uh, Okay, some uh, somebody said that even as a human, also we sometimes tend to sleep with half open eyes. So that's on the uh, yes, yes. And uh, also, uh, Mo- uh, Mohan says that dolphins mm-hmm. sleep with one eye closed. So, but he also gives the you know disclaimer that have read somewhere. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, but uh, about us also, it's very interesting. Like some of us at times tend to keep half of our eyes open and we sleep. Yeah. Yeah. and uh, these people are uh, are really good for experiments when uh, rem phases are being observed like one can clearly see how eye movements are happening right especially in babies it's observed most of the times okay so uh, so since there are no more questions and we are almost close to 12 o'clock uh, so uh, 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 there is one question by rishik rishikesh uh, i don't know if we have time for that but like uh, the question is how yawning is related to sleep okay uh, how yawning is related to sleep um uh, is it really contagious yawning so, uh, do you mind if i answer that mina yeah yeah sure so, so uh, i like uh, rishikesh yawning is a phenomena where people are actually re- uh, researching on it because it's a complete different phenomena and uh, i guess uh, there is also a thing ki you know uh, as uh, megha said ki uh, there was a time ki you know ki uh, uh, yawning may actually uh, you, when your body has more of co2 i mean more of carbon dioxide and you have less of oxygen so yawning is also a phenomena where you try to get in more oxygen in your body and is it really contagious so that is something people are still researching on it but yeah even when i watch a movie and if i see somebody yawning on the screen i get the yawning as well but yeah people are actually researching on it so we don't have a definite answer to it and uh, so yeah so we come to the end of a session and uh, megha uh, thank just, you just i want yeah. to mention one thing like you said whenever we need more oxygen we uh, tend to yawn and it has been observed that Uh, when oxygen intake increases significantly in our body at mm-hmm. times we feel sleepy like uh, more uh, if we are in a really rich oxygen uh, area, uh, area then we might feel sleepy but how exactly oxygen uh, induced sleep uh, it's still being researched acha तो ठीक है सो थैंक यू एवरीवन फॉर जॉइनिंग अस टुडे एंड मेघा थैंक यू सो मच it thank was you. really a exciting session and thank you audience for the chats i mean for the comments for your questions and if you have more questions uh, you can go to our uh, steamboat uh, youtube channel and there again you can put uh, put up your questions there and uh, 
if you are joining us for the first time then let me give you a reminder uh, that we bring our steamboat sessions every i mean second sunday of every month and exactly at 11 am uh, from different fields like from uh, science from technology from engineering from arts and from mathematics and uh, you can also visit our uh, steamboat website um, so thank you so much once again so signing off from hbcse campus thank you 